Today's agenda is designed to provide a logical path that starts from theory to end with practical advice for an effective defense. The talk is divided in three parts, a criminological profile taxonomy of the defendants, the analysis of the digital investigation carried on by the prosecution to build the case, and the trial strategies of the defense counsel. This talk is a primer for those defense counsel who have no experience in the specific field of criminal trials involving computer, digital assets, and the internet. I do apologize in advance uh, to those colleagues who are more experienced in these matters for having simplified too much or not mentioned many issues. The matter of computer crime defense is vast and deep as the ocean, and there is no time to explore it completely. From another perspective, the talk provides insights to computer experts wanting to enter into the digital forensic sector because it offers a way to understand how a lawyer thinks and what are his needs when designing a defense strategy. The focus is on the practical issues as emerged from the direct trial experience. Therefore, the legal theory and the ICT technical aspects are not discussed in detail. Both the legal and the IT professional, though, can find in the discussion enough hints to widen their understanding of the matter and improve the effectiveness of their strategies. Computer-related trial advocacy is a matter in itself, and computer crime advocacy is a very special subcategory. A sound criminal litigation experience is of course useful, but cannot be translated as such in the realm of digital crime. As said, the topic is vast and will require a treatise to be thoroughly analyzed. A dramatically important thing to consider when dealing with such kind of cases is procedural defense. The defense based upon legal technicalities, somebody would call it hair splitting, involving the way investigation have been performed, the role of computer forensic standards, the way international investigation have been carried out. Different jurisdictions, though, give different relevance to such kind of issue. And... Uh, it's necessary to, necessary to take into account that courts often favor the prosecution. Therefore, building a defense only upon procedural ground may be risky. This is by no means a definitive or sacrosanct description of what happens when somebody is targeted by a computer criminal. Nonetheless, there are various reactions triggered uh, by the discovery of having been victim of a criminal offense. In particular, the victim, uh, if the victim has no technical expertise, the very first phase is the most confusing and useful for the defense. Making sense about what happened takes time, and especially in various related or phishing cases, favors the attacker because it gives him the, the time to disappear and to cash in the outcome of his felony. In this phase, the victim is likely to ask for technical support to somebody who might be well-versed in computer programming or system administration but one with no forensic skill. This is something that uh, might prove to be very useful in the trial phase. As for what happens when law enforcement enters the game, this is a moment where uh, mistakes occur. Once involved, the prosecutor starts a multi-trading investigation. Depending by the early existence of a note of a suspect, the prosecutor will have drop email and calls, searches the suspect premises, collect from the crime scene all the information available, and if the crimes involve the internet, will query ISP and internet governance entities. This is a crucial part of the investigation. The use of computer and telecommunication networks for criminal purposes has increased thanks to the spread of knowledge of methods and techniques outside the original hacker environment. And uh, thanks to the lack of attention that ICD companies have paid for a long time to computer security. Action that in the early 90s required highly skilled computer experts are now available as software tools or even in a, as a service business model. Although there are always been illegal, uh, there have been always been uh, illegal uses of, of inf information technology, the first phenomena of unauthorized attacks on computers and software are manifested in uh, the USA in university as a form of protest against the limitation of access to computer centers and software. The US played a central role in shaping the hacker culture that grew up as an articulated and not necessarily current ecosystem. Reading uh, uh, its fundamental text, similar but not entirely overlapping ideological positions emerge. 
Uh, the Grun Manifesto, at the base of, of the free software movement, supports a political vision aimed at eliminating the proper approach to software. The conscience of an hacker terrorizes the hacker anarchic right to access any system in the name of knowledge and despite any law. A de the Declaration of the Independence of Cyberspace uh, is a program for the creation of a new social contract based uh, on a known place, the cyberspace. At the same time, ambiguous figures like Kevin Mitnick on one hand embody the ideal uh, uh, of the anti-system hacker, but on the other hand propose a socially immoral model according to which if something is possible then it can be done no matter what. In Europe, uh, the hacker culture develops particular traits. One strain comes from video games, grows around the concept of just for fun, and only later evolves toward a vision similar to that of the mentor. At the same time, from the dystopian, for the, from the dystopian uh, ideology of cyberpunk, groups are born that use hacker knowledge for political goals and are the predecessor of modern activists. Understanding the profile of the client, either a suspect or a, or a defendant, is crucial. It is useless and inefficient to defend a political activist using a strategy designed for a common, for a, for a crom, common criminal. Sorry. In the same way, the counsel will certainly uh, err in his assessment if he treats a lamer uh, as if he were dealing with a real expert. The criminological and psychological profile of the client also play a fundamental role, role in the interaction between him and the police forces. A activist, once identified, could publicly uh, claim the action, valuing the media exposure more than a trial strategy based on silence and tactical action. A subject who lives in a state of isolation from society or who has, com who has committed a crime without belonging to, uh, to a criminal underground could immediately collapse at the mere sight of uniforms and confess everything on the spot. In some jurisdictions, the statements of the, sub the suspect released without his lawyer are not valid in a trial. This ban uh, does not apply during the investigation. Therefore, the prosecutor will nonetheless take advantage of the information that he has managed to collect. This graph is a synthetic but precise description of how the ecosystem of a digital underground is composed and where the hacker world intersects with the world of crime and intelligence. It is useful because it allows the lawyer to position the, accused, uh, the charged people in a reasonable precise location and facilitates the work of setting up a defense consistent uh, uh, with the defendant criminological profile. Uh, one thing to summarize, therefore, one can say that a hacker is not necessarily a criminal, and a criminal is not necessarily a hacker. It is important to warn the counsel wanting to try a computer crime case that in addition to his traditional counterparts, law enforcement and uh, public prosecutors and sometimes judge, his client and his expert witness are the main threat to, uh, to reckon with. The former, in the case of a skilled person, may be prone to challenge his own defense counsel if he feels that inability uh, of, to grasp the technical complexity of the investigation. The latter, in particular if lacking of academic credential, may try to bring in his personal views rather than objective information, losing the focus on what is necessary for the trial. Therefore, the ideal counsel should have a solid technological background or at least the capability to understand on his own the general aspect of the digital environment so to properly address and keep at bay both the client and the expert witness. The somebody might yet have tampered the information is an example of unfeasible defense. Claiming that information stored on a computer might have been planted because of the lack of proper forensic care in its handling is possible, but sound evidence are needed to, sus to sustain this approach, are just invoking a mere possibility is not enough. Much too often science fiction, fiction ideas are blindly accepted into, uh, in a trial. A computer is just a couple of access credentials that does not necessarily identify as a natural person. As far as a criminal investigation is concerned, there is no virtual or cyberspace. Artificial intelligence is not ghost in the shell, and there are no autonomous algorithms that does things on behalf of human. By contrast, highly automated software can of course perform the material part of the, of the crime, but the a human being is always behind the, the screen. Traditional evidence, fingerprints, tailing people, witness statement remains very important. A council can build a highly complex technical defense that can be destroyed by a simple, simple old-school police investigation. 
Possibly, though, the bigger mistake is lecturing the court. As said, as a rule of thumb, courts do not like when a lawyer plays smart. A judge might not be skilled enough in the complexities of computer crimes, uh, and therefore it might be necessary to, to introduce technical facts in the trial, but this should be done with a lot of care. A component of the trial strategy is the exploitation of the Swiss cheese principle. How the digital world works allows to highlight missing links in investigations. For example, the IP number assigned to the suspect uh, was communicated to the investigators by the ISP, but they did not verify whether the ISP handed out the correct data, or the prosecutor sized the computer that the accused person used to commit the crime, but no one verified if the computer was functioning uh, at that time or if it could connect to the network. Moreover, nobody may be very just verified if the charge uh, is that of a spreading a virus, that the infected computers were actually damaged. Countless are the example of how the Swiss cheese strategy comes into play. The defense counts role is to spot the holes, plug them as prosecutor duty. Mens rea is often uh, an underestimated uh, defense. Its assessment, not only in the computer crime trials, is very complicated. Action and their consequences are measurable, but proving the mental attitude of the charged person is not always easy or possible. Uh, nevertheless, mens rea is fundamental to establishing the defendant's innocence or guiltness. In, or, in other words, it's not enough for a provision to state that illegal access to an IT system is a criminal offense, but it's also necessary to specify whether the crime is committed because of a voluntary act or also by mistake or recklessness. In case of illegal ex access to an Italian bank, the Criminal Court of Milan in Italy acquitted the defendants because they had committed the fact uh, by believing uh, that the penetration test contract between the bank and the multinational software company for which they worked was already active. The fact was there, but mens rea was not. There are several checkpoints to consider when tuning a defense. The victim, whether an individual or a company, might have compromised the information or wrongly reported criminal information. The police might just have gone along the easy way without taking into account the whole evidence or, by contrast, try to push a specific theory of the case that does not, not match with facts. Law enforcement sometimes ask for an ISP or platform for information without a warrant, because there is no time, they used to say. This is a wound to the right of defense, as the defendant has no way to double-check if the information given um, are correct. In a recent crackdown on digital piracy in Italy, an innocent US website has been blocked without the owner being officially notified of the facts. The is still ongoing. As said, a judge rarely agrees to be lectured by a lawyer, especially if the latter is also an academic. Often, however, computer crime trials require the counsel to introduce in the cross-examination and in its objection some technical aspects that are most likely little known to the judge and about which, perhaps, the prosecutor will have to dispute. It is essential, therefore, to find the right balance between the need to pass on the information to the court and the importance of not highlighting the judge's lacks of knowledge or appearing as patronizing him. Furthermore, the lawyer must have respect for the intelligence of the court. The lawyer should not deliberately try to confuse the judge by exploiting his unfamiliarity with information technology, to present arguments that are just wild speculation, or to generate confusion and lengthen the duration of the trial. The judge may not be an information technology expert, but he is perfectly capable of understanding when a lawyer is trying to be smart. It is a suicide strategy that can wholly harm the defendant and ruin the professional reputation of his counsel. The procedural defense whose purpose is to challenge the evidence-gathering process and not the results achieved is essential in a computer crime case. 
The difficulty to put into practice are mainly two. The counsel must be well versed in the IT aspects of the investigation and solely relying upon legalistic matters usually conveys to the judge and to the prosecutor the sense of an indirect admission of guilt. Therefore, the lawyer, the lawyer must be cautious in using a procedural defense to challenge how the prosecutor achieved his results and their evidentiary value to avoid being a cast of wild speculation and thus deadly affecting the case, in particular if there is a jury listening. Deciding to go for a procedural defense then suggests to confront directly the matter in court by making a public statement about in terms of uh, the importance of protecting the right to defense. Defense for a computer crime trial varies greatly depending on when the lawyer has been involved in the case. If he is called in during the investigation, he can understand more easily the direction that the prosecutor might take. If, on the other hand, the lawyer intervenes just before the trial, his options are more limited because he can only act based on what the prosecution has done, with a limited possibility of a parallel investigation. The choice to set the trial exclusively on procedural defense is, uh, as we have said, hazardous because it, uh, it is seen as an admission of guilt and therefore introduces a negative prejudice in the mind of the judge. Nevertheless, the procedural defense matters because it commands respect for the due process and the, and the rule of law. This is the way the procedural arguments should be presented to push back the perception in the judge's mind that the counsel is in a desperate condition. Consider procedural defense as a legalistic approach that lawyers push so far um, as to go against common sense uh, from the ju judge's point of view. And therefore, uh, such kind of de defense uh, is not taken in, uh, into consideration. However, it's also true that while the state has unlimited means and resources, the council's sole weapons are the law and the logic. And therefore, this legalistic approach is the only one that can guarantee a level playing field. Challenging the merit of accusation ranges from exposing uncertainty of the defendant's identity to the lack of evidence of the mens rea required by the incriminating provision, to the inconsistencies of the modus operandi of the law enforcement and investigators. Moreover, such kind of defense may be limited to highlighting shortcomings in the evidence gathered by the prosecutor and the technical inconsistencies in the law enforcement expertise. Unlike procedural defense, however, in this case it's more difficult to give general indication because much depends on the specific way in what specific laws change from one jurisdiction to another. Putting the strategy into action, the counsel must manage the, the relationship with the judge with extreme, uh, extreme care. This brief consideration do not exhaust such a vast and complex issues uh, as the criminal defense of a computer criminal. They represent, however, a basis on which to improve the professional capability and to protect the rule of law and the due process, uh, we, uh, without which there would not be justice on earth. I handle a few blogs on topics uh, of this talk and other things related to law, geopolitics and culture of digital technology. Here are the links. To be in touch and stay informed about my books, papers and talks, the best way is to connect uh, via LinkedIn, as I'm sorry, I'm not on other social networks. Thank you. Arigato gozaimasu.